Hello. Last time we treated the operational limits of an aircraft, which should never be exceeded. The performance limits of an aircraft describing what it is able to do may lie within the boundaries specified by the operational limits, or they may exceed these limits. As you see in the figure, these limits are altitude dependent. Now that seems quite difficult for a pilot. How should he or she deal with monitoring all these limits quickly when also piloting the aircraft? Now today I would like to address this issue by having a closer look at the indicators available to the pilot in the cockpit. Let's start with the stall speed of the aircraft. As you can see, it increases with altitude. Furthermore, this limit is dependent on the aircraft's weight. In equilibrium, lift should equal weight, and from that we can derive the equation for the minimum airspeed. A larger weight results in a higher stall speed. So, the worst case stall speed occurs at maximum aircraft weight. In order to monitor the speed, the pilot has an airspeed indicator, which is part of the basic six instruments, always available in the cockpit. The airspeed indicator is a pneumatic instrument, which means it is connected to two inputs, a pitot tube and a static port. The pitot tube is me measures the total air pressure and the static port measures the static pressure. Now these two ports are carefully positioned on the airframe in order to provide the correct measurement. Schematically, an airspeed indicator looks like this. On the inside there is a sealed chamber which is connected to the static pressure port. The total pressure is connected to a capsule which expands as a function of the internal pressure, the total pressure, and the external pressure, the static pressure. The pressure difference is a measure for the airspeed and is provided to the dial through a set of gears. For low speed applications, we can use Bernoulli's law to determine the airspeed based on the pressure difference. The left hand side of the equation is the measured pressure difference, and the right hand side is the dynamic pressure. However, we have a problem here. There is one equation with two unknowns. The air density is unknown to the instrument and the airspeed as well. So, this cannot be solved. A simple solution is to make an assumption for one of the variables, and that is exactly what is done. It is assumed that the aircraft is flying at sea level conditions, and thus, air density equals 1.225 kg per cubic meter. Of course, this solves the problem of calculating a value, but it also means that the airspeed provided by the indicator is incorrect. It is not the true airspeed, but the equivalent airspeed. It is equivalent to what it would be at sea level conditions. So let's write down the dynamic pressure. The airspeed in this equation is the true airspeed. If we set air density equal to the sea level conditions, then airspeed becomes equivalent airspeed. If this is rewritten, then VE equals the true airspeed multiplied with the square root of the ratio of the actual air density and the sea level air density. So, the, in the airspeed indicator is wrong, but what does this mean for our limit, the minimum airspeed? The minimum airspeed equation gives the minimum true airspeed. If we rewrite this to equivalent airspeed, then we obtain the following. VE minimum is a function of the sea level air density. So minimum equivalent airspeed is independent of altitude. And this means that a limit on the dial always gives the correct stall speed, even though the absolute value in terms of true airspeed is incorrect. On such a dial, the limit indicated by the lower bound of the green bar is always indicated for the worst case condition, maximum aircraft weight. So, if the pilot stays above this limit, he or she will always be clear of the stall speed. Now that is quite nice, isn't it? In practice, the equations become a bit more complex if we include compressibility effects due to the Mach number. However, the basic principle is exactly the same. This may seem strange, an airspeed indicator that does not provide the right value, but that is always correct when predicting the stall speed. So how do we explain this from a physical point of view? In essence, the airspeed instrument measures the dynamic pressure 
And this is exactly what the wing experiences in the flow. Now that is why it correctly predicts the stall condition. If we go back to the diagram with our limits, we can see the maximum operating airspeed has the same shape as the stall speed. Now this limit is also constant when expressed as an equivalent airspeed. The maximum operating airspeed is indicated by a red line, a limit, on the dial. From the treatment of gust loads, we know that flying slow is beneficial to reduce the impact of a gust. The yellow bar is the airspeed range that should be avoided when penetrating bad weather. Moreover, the pilot should be careful when applying control inputs in this region. This is because the controls become more effective at higher speeds. Maximum control inputs lead to excessive maneuver loads, or can lead to excessive maneuver loads. So, two limits can be indicated with a fixed boundary on the airspeed indicator. Now, the maximum altitude indicated in the flight envelope can also easily be, de be determined. It works as follows. The altimeter is one of the basic six instruments connected to the static port. On the inside of this instrument, there is a membrane which will expand to a certain level based on the static pressure inside the box. The expansion of the membrane is a measure of the altitude. Unfortunately, the static pressure on sea level may vary, depending on the weather conditions. So again, this instrument may give incorrect readings if the pilot is interested in the distance to the ground. Nevertheless, the maximum altitude in our flight envelope depends only on the static pressure outside the aircraft. So, the maximum altitude is a fixed pressure altitude and thus will always be constant on the instrument. Now this leaves us with only one operational limit to discuss. The maximum operating Mach number. Aircraft which are able to fly in the transonic speed regime always have a Mach meter on board. The limit indicated here is a fixed Mach number and therefore also a fixed limit on the Mach meter. It is beyond the scope of this lecture to explain how this instrument works exactly. What I can say for now is that the Mach number can be determined from the pressure ratio of the dynamic pressure and the static pressure. The dynamic pressure is measured by the airspeed indicator and the static pressure by the altimeter. If I now go back to the operational limits and the performance limits, then there is only one limit covered by the indicators, the maximum airspeed limit. This limit cannot be exceeded and therefore does not have to be indicated. It will be reached when maximum power is applied at a constant altitude. Now this concludes the discussion on how the pilot can monitor the limits whilst flying.